Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we will be talking about what is lateral periodontal cyst. But before we continue, make sure to smash the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. Lateral periodontal cyst is a non-inflammatory cyst located, as the name suggests, on the lateral surface of a vital tooth. So when you do clinical examination for your patient, you will see that the teeth associated are vital. They are non-carious. But it will be discovered by chance radiographically. So you will discover the lateral periodontal cyst by the x-ray. But on the clinical examination, you will see the associated teeth are non-carious because the cause behind it is it is non-inflammatory cyst. So it is not associated with inflammation, not associated with carriers, etc. We will speak about what are the causes behind it, for sure. Now, what is the etiology behind the, this type of cyst? It is derived from the rest cells of myelases, not like the dentigerous cyst, also referred to as the eruption cyst, which is derived from the reduced enamel epithelium. The etiology behind each cyst is important to know in order to distinguish them from, e from one another. So here we have a radiographical picture for a patient that came with no any complaint. We decided to take multiple x-rays for the patient. He just came basically for a periodic review for his teeth, whether they are good, whether they need any filling, etc. So in the x-ray, in the periapical x-ray specifically, we detected a radiolucency that is located between the canine premolar area, or you can say between the two premolars as the picture shown, between the two premolars, there is a radiolucency located on the lateral side of the tooth. And the associated teeth, basically, as you can see in the picture, they are non carriers There is no any hidden caries. There is no any form of any previous restoration, which may, maybe the patient has an old restoration. And underneath the restoration, there is a recurrent caries. But None of these were detected. Only the radiolucency were, was found. So the patient was informed that this is lateral periodontal cyst and the associated teeth are vital. So if you do vitality testing or sensibility testing via the cold test, the teeth basically will be vital. They will respond normally to the cold test. So this type of cyst is referred to as the lateral periodontal cyst. Another patient came for a chief complaint related to one of his upper teeth, upper anterior teeth to be specific. We decided as a general practitioner to take multiple x-rays for the patient as part of the clinical examination for the other teeth. So what we found that as you can see in the periapical image, that there is a teardrop radiolucency located between the canine premolar area, also on the lateral side of the tooth. And the associated teeth are non uh, they are sorry, they are vital and the associated teeth are non carriers. So the patient was informed that this type of cyst the patient is having is the lateral periodontal cyst that is completely asymptomatic and treatment should be done. Why? We will inform you, I will inform you after in a couple of seconds. So the most common location for the lateral periodontal cyst is located between the canine premolar area or it can be located to the two premolars. So the, we will have a radiolucency. The characteristic feature for the lateral periodontal, there is a radiolucency located on the lateral surface of the tooth lateral surface of the tooth, immediately you will say that this is the lateral periodontal cyst and the associated teeth are non carious and they are vital. This is how you can know that this type of cyst is lateral periodontal, not any type of cyst. Now, what are the causes 
behind this type of cyst? Why does it appear? Number one is trauma, any trauma to the teeth from childhood. With time, basically, it will start to develop and you'll end up having this large mass in the, between the canine premolar area. Another cause can be infection in the periodontal ligament inside the tooth. If there's any infection inside the periodontal ligament itself, basically, this infection with time, it will develop a cyst at the end. That's the main causes behind it. Now, what are the symptoms? As I said, it is completely asymptomatic. It will, dis it will be discovered by chance radiographically. Now, some patients, they will tell you that if it is completely asymptomatic and it's not causing for me any pain or symptoms, why shall I remove it? I will tell you that it should be removed. Why is that? Because it will affect the bone. It is located in the bone itself. So if it is not removed, then it will affect the bone, which means basically with time, the canine premolar area, the teeth, it will have dilaceration. They will end up having dilaceration because this cyst with time, it will keep on expanding. It will become basically up to two centimeter in diameter. It will expand. It will affect the bone level. It will cause dilaceration for the teeth. So that's why important we need to remove it. Very important. Now, what is the treatment that we can offer for our patients? Inculation and curettage. What do I mean by this? Surgical removal of the cyst. And we need very important for any periodontist any surgeon, any general practitioner to follow up the patient for one year, at least for one year, in order to check if there is any recurrence. Because as I said previously, it is asymptomatic, discovered routinely on the x-ray. So that's why we need to follow up the patient after I did, for instance, inculation and curettage for one of my patients. I will recall them again after three months. We will take an x-ray to see if there's any radiolucency left behind between the canine premolar area in order to check if there is any signs of recurrence because we don't want the cyst to return back again. Complete removal of the cyst is recommended. And that's it. I am done. If you have any questions, please do write it down in the comment section below. Thank you and goodbye.